Good evening and welcome to the 23 News Update at 10. I'm Kathleen Cohen. We begin with breaking news tonight. One man is dead after being shot on Rockford's northwest side. They don't have any suspects in custody at this time. Reporting live in Rockford, Kathleen Cohen, 23 News. You now have 1.3 billion reasons to join Powerball Fever after no one matched all six numbers in Saturday night's drawing. All you need is two bucks and some luck. You said you don't have any Christmas songs stuck in your head. You have Friday by Rebecca. I, I do. I have Rebecca Friday. Black, who sings that? Yes, I don't, I don't think really anyone right. sings that. It was just it was just sort of written and then spewed out there. But that is in my head, and it'll be in my head until tomorrow. And and now I, it's in my head. Yeah. It's Thank you. It doesn't and now it's in everyone's head. That that's yes. that's the worst and most horrifying thing about that song is you just hear it. And it's, it's there. It's so catchy. It's I almost just had a heart attack because there was a, a box elder bug on the table right in front of me. <laughs> anyway, they're all over the studio. I guess it's that time of year. Well, Andy Gannon is live this morning from Alignment Rockford's Academy. Academy Expo. Students from Belvedere, Harlem, and Hananiga school districts are expected to attend later this morning. Andy? It's called Keeping Families and Communities Together, or KFACT. Right now, there's 80 girls in the program learning what they have to do to pursue their dreams after they graduate high school. Right now, I'm standing in the center of the building. Everything is still under construction, but right behind me here is where the two patient consultation rooms will be. Rockford Housing Authority now looks forward to the next three years of renovations and construction. Good evening and welcome to 23 News at 5. I'm Kathleen Cohen. For fair organizers, it's not a matter of if budget cuts will be made, but a matter of where. This is going to be one of the first medicinal marijuana facilities or dispensaries to open here in the state. Thanks to over 20 tips, Beloit police say they have found what is believed to be the car suspects were driving when they shot and killed five-year-old Austin Ramos Jr. This is video from the crime scene Friday night. Officers say the maroon SUV seen leaving the scene was recovered in Western Rock County this morning. The car is being processed for evidence. Ramos was shot and killed while riding in the back seat of his father's car on January 22nd. Police say they want to continue urging the public to come forward with information in this homicide investigation. The visitation for Ramos is going on until 8 o'clock tonight. Funeral services will take place tomorrow at 1 p.m. at Our Lady of the Assumption Catholic Church in Beloit. If the annexation passes on Monday, it will go into effect January 1st. And welcome back. Donna Apgar joins us now from Winnebago County Animal Services with the Pet of the Week. Who do we have here? This is Diamond. Diamond is about a year old. She came in as a stray. I think she was found out by Linden and Alpine. Now, Andy, people have been out shopping some since late last night, some since early this morning. And I was over at the Target on East State Street right before coming over to the Cherryville Mall where I talked to some of the store employees. They said their store opened at 6 p.m. last night and they said some of their most popular items this year include the Wii U gaming system, the Fitbit wristbands, and the Xbox bundles. I'm told those Xbox bundles sold out in minutes. The West Rockford staple will also start offering lunch specials three days a week beginning in January. Are you guys going to dress up for Halloween? I know, I know what you're dressing up as, right? <laughs> I want to be a chicken. I wear it every, every single year. It's like a full on chicken suit with like a pillow and everything. We'll and have to get that at least on Facebook. <laughs> Both Laura and Megan say that seeing Phoenix here at the Boone County Fair, happy and healthy, is such a rewarding experience. Parents and service providers are worried that their babies will not get the necessary services and therapies for development. What See, are you doing? it's better now. <laughs> See, she's on a stool. I'm on the so taller stool much taller. today. See, now look how small. Look how like, small I, I look so down tall? here. I did vote. Only if the Jonas Brothers are up for something, though. I was a big Jonas Brothers fan. Hey. <laughs> I know I'm aging myself. Is or that Mbop? Under aging myself. Is that the Mbop? No. No, we were. That's the Hansons. That's Hansons. Yeah. Yep. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> got to get my brother straight. <laughs> All right, we've got weather on the threes from 23 News. The flu season is right around the corner, and nurses from the Winnebago Department of Public Health say it's important to start vaccinating now. And Garrett's friends aren't the only ones asking for the violence to stop. There have been one or more mass shootings around the United States every day since January 1st of this year. Now one local organization is saying enough is enough. More people are dying of heroin all around the country. One local sheriff's department is teaming up with state police to stop drug sales. Mike, we are just moments away from the Christmas tree lighting ceremony. The Christmas tree is behind me right there. It's kind of hard to see because it's not lit up quite yet. And my new friend, Elena. How are you, Elena? Good. What are you most looking forward to today? Um, this is my first time here, so I don't really know what's here, but... 
I want to see Santa. I know, I know Santa's around here somewhere. I saw Frosty, I saw Reindeer. I am out here on the ice and I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I actually do not know how to ice skate, but you know what, the skates are on, I'm out here. That's a step in the right direction, right? But for those of us who don't know how to skate, check this out right here. This is a bobby. This is my new best friend. You can push it. If you're a kid, you can sit on it with your parent pushing. It's very cool. For me right now, it's just making sure that I don't fall on my face. You can Whitney, I'm standing in front of Medmar, which will be one of the first medical marijuana dispensaries to open in the state. Earlier today, I talked to the vice president of Medmar to find out what this facility will offer. Medical cannabis is real, and we're really looking forward uh, to helping patients uh, here in the greater Rockford area. MedMar is opening the first medical marijuana dispensary in the state line, located on McFarland Road, right off of Perryville Road in Rockford. For the first time in Illinois, patients suffering from a list of 40 different medical issues will be able to buy marijuana for their medicinal needs. It's going to be life-changing to those patients. You know, people with, with they're going through cancer treatment that have bad nausea and, and need to treat that nausea, or they they don't have appetite and they need to eat and, and cannabis helps them through that. And then people with muscular disorders uh, that, you know, with epilepsy or others, that cannabis actually makes their life livable where they can't even live without cannabis because the drugs just don't exist that control those seizures. In order to qualify, patients must have a debilitating medical condition. They must also register with the state of Illinois, be over 18 years old, get fingerprinting done by the state, and pay a registration fee in a process that takes about 30 days. There are currently 22 cannabis growing centers in the state of Illinois. Medmar plans to get their product from local growers, including a cultivation center in Freeport. It's great to have the cultivation innovation center is already growing the product um, because we know that come October we'll be able to have product to provide to patients uh, who need it critically in Illinois. Right now I'm standing in the center of the building. Everything is still under construction but right behind me here is where the two patient consultation rooms will be. Medmar plans to hire locally so that the jobs stay in Rockford. Patient consultants will work to figure out which methods work best for patients. Now, Medmar plans to offer the most effective strains of medicinal marijuana. They also plan to offer edibles for a variety of different types of treatments. Now, this facility plans to open for business in October. Reporting live in Rockford, Kathleen Cohen, 23 News. Renee Cruz and Allie Baker. It's a moment Robin Baker never thought she'd see in her daughter's lifetime. Cheering and chancing in a crowded gym as Allie Baker and Renee Cruz become royalty. It's the first time students with special needs have ever been crowned king and queen at North Boone High School. Oh my gosh, it's like beyond my wildest dreams. Homecoming King Renee had one word to describe how he feels today. What was it like so winning Homecoming King today? Uh, happy. Students in a group called Pit Crew help classmates with disabilities in the life skills program. That's where the idea to nominate Renee and Allie for Homecoming Court was born and the two won with a landslide victory. We really, um, we were really excited and we told everyone to like, you know, if you guys have a chance, like, please vote for Renee and Allie because it was very, like, beautiful to see something like that happen. Uh, you know, it makes me feel really proud to be a part of such a great and wonderful school with all the students um, here who really care about uh, what's going on and those who are in need. And I just, I like to see that they've really rallied around um, our students who are in the life skills program. The goal of making Allie and Renee feel loved and accepted has become a reality, but it's also a dream come true for the Baker family. When something like this happens and, and when you know your child is accepted and embraced and loved, it, it just makes the other things that have hurt her, you know, that are, or that, you know, that have been difficult, the challenges in the past, it just, they, they don't mean anything. Now everyone I talked to today at North Boone High School says they are so proud of the sense of community represented today as well as the school spirit. In Poplar Grove, Kathleen Cohen, 23 News. I, I want to remember my life. Winnebago sophomore basketball player Randy Cordell has suffered from multiple concussions just this year. Doctors say if he gets any more, he may not be able to remember his name by the time he turns 23.
A new Illinois law mandates all Illinois schools have a concussion oversight team to help determine a plan for student athletes to return back to the classroom and back to their sport, something the Rockford School District already has in place. We have formed a committee, uh, the oversight committee, consists of uh, a doctor, a nurse, uh, our athletic directors, um, our lead athletic trainer, uh, myself, and our lead nurse uh, from the school district. I don't really get to determine when he goes back to play. They have to do it. They do the concussion test. Um, once he passes, they slowly work him back into it. But it's nerve-wracking because I'm afraid he's going to get another one. Randy says having the team made the transition back to school go smoothly, both for basketball and for learning. It's very comforting. Like. All the people are behind me. They understand what I'm going through. Specialists in the medical field say that the new legislation is helping bring a necessary awareness to brain injuries that could be very serious if left untreated. Brain damage doesn't go away, it heals. But the, the scar, if you will, the, the damage left behind is still there. Health is always number one, even though like, even if you're really into sports, health is definitely more important. So make sure that you can like get back to full recovery before you can go back out there. Randy and his family tell me that doctors recommend not playing sports anymore if he gets any more concussions. Again, he says that that concussion oversight team has helped him greatly in his recovery this year. When you talk about these injuries sometimes going unreported, are they hard to diagnose? You know, I did talk to a headache specialist and he said that almost half of all concussions go undiagnosed mm -hmm. and that's yeah. because people tend to look for the traditional symptoms of concussions like amnesia and dizziness. Sometimes if those traditional symptoms don't appear, it may not be diagnosed or properly treated and even go unnoticed. The concussion oversight team will help run all the tests to make sure the students are okay. And that's important. As a parent, you want your child to grow up and have a normal life and be able to um, thrive and be successful and be happy. And, you know, these therapists have really given both of my children a, a chance at that. It's a program called Early Intervention, and it's changed the life of Heather Owens and her two kids who have developmental disabilities. Good job. Good job, Brody. EI is a program that is state funded, helping more than 400 kids in the state line. It uses therapy and exercises designed to address developmental delays experienced by children with Down syndrome or other disabilities. It's really critical that we teach our children how to use their muscles, how to align their body, how to elongate muscles so that they can use them because they won't gain the skills for everyday life that they need if they're not shown there how to go. use them. Good job. Martha Cowan says 80% of brain growth happens before the age of two. She says children with special needs need this early intervention to engage kids to make sure they reach critical developmental milestones. But without a state budget, therapists aren't getting paid and are canceling appointments. Others are moving out of state. We have lost one therapist already. Um, her physical therapist actually had her last meeting in August. We got the phone call from her occupational therapist that says if she does not, if we don't get the budget passed, then she's done the first part of October until the budget passes. Owen's son Brody sees four therapists each week. He wasn't looking at us. And you know, something so small as like not you know, knowing that my son doesn't recognize me, he can't hear me, he can't see me. Um, it was through early intervention that we've been able to make hurdles with him. You saw for the first time he's able to crawl. Owens worries about her son's future as the future of the state budget is still in limbo. So I've seen these people give my children a gift that is irreplaceable. Heather Owens and Holly Hill tell me that they have seen their babies grow and develop drastically from the early intervention therapy sessions. They say without the program, they're afraid their babies will fall behind their milestones and never learn the skills necessary to do something as simple as walk or talk. Holly Hilly's daughter Maya has been using early intervention therapy services since she was three months old. At 19 months, she can now crawl on her own, is learning to walk, and is even communicating through sign language. Until she was probably about, i say maybe nine or 10 months, she would just sit in one spot and you'd walk away, half hour later she'd be still sitting there. Now she's, you as go. you can see, she's on the go. She does not stand still. Go, go, go! 
<laughs> One of Maya's therapists left the state to find another job due to the lack of state budget. Another was going to terminate the essential services because she wasn't getting paid. Earlier this week, the state announced providers will get that funding. Martha Cowan, a local occupational therapist, says funding for early intervention is a cost saver for the state in the long run. When a child with a disability um, whether it's autism, cerebral palsy, or Down syndrome, or other developmental delays, spend a year in early intervention. It saves the state $180,000 in special ed services during their public school years. Camille Hernandez went through the early intervention program from the time she was 17 months old until age three. The services helped her reach her developmental milestones, and now she can communicate effectively at eight years old. When I was little, it was really, really hard for me to talk. And now it's really, really easy. It, it feels like just a regular life, like most people have. She had a 1 in 24 chance of overcoming her diagnosis, and she has. And I know in my heart and my gut, I know it's because of early intervention. Now, Martha Cowan is the only occupational therapist for five counties, not including Winnebago County, for early intervention. Now, if you are planning on coming over to the Cherryvale Mall or doing any shopping today, you might want to get here early and be prepared to walk because that parking lot is packed. Reporting live at the Cherryvale Mall, Kathleen Cohen, 23 News. But for now, in Belvedere, reporting live, I'm Kathleen Cohen, 23 News. Mike, back to you in the studio. All right.